And as Jesus was a Jew, uh, the Jewish people, or what I like to, pref pre you know, the better term is the Hebrew people, they grew up underneath the law. And Jesus comes and he begins to show us this new way. And when he shows us this new way of living, he begins to show us this new way of living. And uh, he basically, the life of Jesus is an indictment on what was already in existence when Jesus came. Because the, the Jewish people, they knew Moses and they knew the law, but their interpretation of Moses and the law was wrong. And their idea, because let me give you some more background. Kind of like how America is nowadays, uh, the Jewish people had kind of fallen down. They were kind of struggling, okay? And they realized that they were struggling. They realized they had fallen out of sorts with God. And they attempted to have, quote unquote, a revival with God. And when they attempted to have this revival, they revived around, around the wrong things. They attempted to become more religious, but you have to always step back. And if you don't get anything else today, make sure you get this. Sometimes you can become more religious and you please God less. You actually anger God. Amen. Let me say that two more times. Sometimes when you become more religious, you can move farther away from God. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes when you become more religious, you can get farther away from God. And that's at the time when Jesus and John the Baptist come on the scene, they had become more religious. They were following the laws of the land or the laws of God, and they were adding to it. They were persecuting people because they weren't, other people weren't quote unquote as holy as these religious leaders that were in the in the time frame. And while they had become more uh, religious or more Jewish in their following of the law, they had gotten farther away from God. And Jesus comes on the scene and his whole ministry, along with the ministry of John the Baptist, was basically saying, you're doing this all wrong. That sometimes less is more. Let me say that two more times. Sometimes less is more. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes less is more. You know, I, I uh, my grandfather in the gospel preached this and, I, and, and preached this as a sermon and I want to turn it into a book one day where the book is called A Leap from Arithmetic to Love. And uh, a lot of times religious people, they try to serve God with their monetary calculations. Or like, oh, let me give you a tenth. Oh, let me, let me pay you with a tenth. Or let me go, you know, let me not do anything on the seventh day of the week. Or let me pray three or five times a day. Or let me, you know, make sure I do this this many times or do that that many times. And religious people try to serve with arithmetic. But the thesis that my grandfather in the gospel basically came out with is that if you want to be spiritual, if you really want to follow God, you got to take a leap from arithmetic to love. And, 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 and let me just help you understand this is that I don't count how many times I talk to my wife a day. Amen. It's not, I don't have to count because I love my wife. And to be honest with you, I have to pull myself away from my wife and my children in order to do work. Because I love them so much. I don't have to count like, oh, well, I fulfilled my requirements as a father. I have dealt with them 2.3 times a day. No, 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 no. When you love, it's hard to quantify love. So that's why, um, that's why I don't take up a tithe in the Hill ministry. You know, when people hear that I don't take up a tithe, they, you know, sometimes religious people will come to me and say, oh, Tony, you're letting them off. You're supposed to, yeah, you need to make them tithe. You need to make them tithe. You know, tithing is a discipline of the church. Arr, arr, arr. That's how people try to come off to me. 
And I repeat what my grandfather in the gospel told me. He said, when you got a hold of a man's heart, you don't have to worry about his wallet. Amen. Amen. When you got a hold of a man's heart, you don't have to worry about his wallet. When God got your heart and you are aware of the power of the church, of the power of the ministry and the, and the difference that Jesus and the gospel has made into your life. I don't have to come to you every fourth Sunday and start begging for a tithe. Amen. I don't have to go and, 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 and always be reminding people how much they need to give. When you know what Jesus did for you and you also know that the church is a vehicle of that work. So understanding that um, we all need to take a leap from arithmetic to love and it's not anything new because we all can get into the numbers game. Or well, I went to church this many times in the month. You know, when I was, especially before I got saved, my family, when I was growing up, we did that big time. You know, like my mama would be like, we got to go this time because, you know, we can't go and miss two Sundays in a row. You know, like how many times a month we went to church was a big deal to my mama. Amen. But we all need to take a leap from arithmetic to love. Because when you understand what Jesus was talking about, he was trying to get the Pharisees and Sadducees to take that leap with him. Because they were trying to quantify the spirit. They were trying to quantify and and uh, they, they tried to make a formula for love. They tried to make a formula out of something that's supposed to come from a place of love. And that love comes from grace and we try to do that as well and 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 I know I've shared this before but the Lord brought me back here in order to remind you one more time because don't get me wrong we have cults matter of fact there's one of you one of the families online matter of fact maybe two of the families online your family has been infected with a cult called the Black Hebrew Israelites. And those Black Hebrew Israelites, they are still underneath the law. Matter of fact, one of them, I saw them, he was going on a job interview. And according to Old Testament law, you have to wear your, you have to wear a tasseled garment, a blue and white tasseled garment. And he was upset that when he went on the job interview, he had to tuck in his tassels. Amen. There are groups, there are cult groups that try to put you back underneath the law. And yeah, the, perhaps the book of Galatians is here for that as well. But I write to you and let me give you the background of the book of Galatians. Jesus was a Jew and while Jesus was a Jew he delivered people from the legalism of the law he did not tell people to stop following the law to disregard the law or disrespect the law but he taught them how to fulfill the law and that's what we do in the New Testament in the New Covenant with Jesus we fulfill the law amen so we are the fulfillment of the law, everything that we view in the Old Testament, every Old Testament law, we should be looking at how do we fulfill that law in Jesus? How in the New Testament do we fulfill that law? What does that law in the Old Testament, it meant this, but now in the light of Jesus Christ, what does that law mean now? Because many times people, as an example, there's one thing of the law, honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But if you look at the full ramifications of honoring the Sabbath day and keep it holy, Jesus is your Sabbath. That you have stopped working your way to get into heaven and now you rest in the Lord Jesus because he is the fulfillment, the ultimate fulfillment of the Sabbath. 
that doesn't mean that we can't honor a day out of respect for God. But that's not how I keep the Sabbath is honoring a day on the calendar or a day on the week. I keep the Sabbath from never trying to return to my works for my own salvation. Amen. So, so you have to, we have to look at all the Old Testament laws. Even my, my associate that on Facebook who now he believes he needs to wear tasseled garments. You have to realize that your character now is the garment that you wear in Christ. And your character are the tassels by which people and men can cleave to. And when you have no tassels, no one can latch on to you. Amen. So you have to realize that all of the Old Testament is still alive, but you have to ask yourself, how is it still alive? And how will it be fulfilled? Well, Jesus is resurrected. Jesus ascends to heaven. And there are people who come within in the Christian church and they try to bring the Christian church back underneath the law. Very similar to what the black Hebrew Israelites are doing today. And the Apostle Paul comes at them and he comes up, comes at them very strongly. <coughs> and in Galatians 1 verses 1 through 4, he gives his typical greeting. Amen. And then in Galatians 6 through 10, he goes and he lets them know that there is only one gospel. There is only one good news. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's no, because you have to realize, when you try to please God by following the law, then you are changing who you believe Jesus to be. Let me share that two more times. When you are trying to reach salvation or please God with your following of the law, you are changing the essence of who you are worshiping in Jesus. You are changing the attributes of Jesus. Like I shared last Sunday with that sermon, Kent Sugi, is that the Jesus I serve is good enough to die for uh, obese people. The Jesus I serve is good enough to die for and save whoremongers. The Jesus that I serve, that, 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 that I love, that died for me, He's good enough to die and, and to live and to save murderers. Amen. And faith in Jesus alone is enough for me to be saved because that's just how awesome and that's just how, how powerful what he did for us. That, that's just how significant it is. But when you go and step back and you try to make it where... Uh, Jesus, what Jesus did for you is not enough and you got to do some extra stuff to be saved then it's almost like you're spitting in the face of Jesus and you're saying what he did was not good enough that you got to do something on your own to be saved 